Okay, we are driving to the boat yard. Um, we've, we flew in to JFK yesterday from England. It's been in England for nine months working. The boat has been in the boat yard at Harbour Grace, Tidewater Marina. And we are about six minutes away from there now. Ben's quite excited. Your destination is on the right. I'm guessing it's still in this bit. There she is. Weird. Yeah. So those are all the props to keep the snow off. They didn't really work. These are all the tarps that were supposed to keep the snow and the rain off. They didn't really work. The front one held up. There's a bit of mould in here. It's going to need a bit of cleaning. These are all stiff. Mm. Doesn't look too bad. No, it's dry. Doesn't smell damp. Oh my god. It's weird, it's so weird coming back, isn't it? It is very I feel like odd. It's really, really bad about the fact that we've left her for nine, well, nearly nine months. Mm. What's the um, plan of action? Uh, we're going to start turning stuff on. So the battery monitor is good, says there's power in the um, domestic. Power battery bank, water, gas, electric, so we can at least boil a kettle. So the water, we're going to have to flush, the tanks have got, what is it, isn't it that pink black old stuff? Back, yeah, antifreeze. So wash that through, and then we need to sort out some sort of tube on the sea box for the bucket, so we've got some sort of way of washing up and water. The old bucket and chuck it, yeah. yeah. And then, the, yeah, and then the big priority is getting the diesel heater working, because it's going to get to like minus five again tonight, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And then check the bedding's dry. And, um, I mean, it's like two o'clock now. Yeah. So we've only got a few hours. Sort it all out. Yeah, just moment. And then most of the cleaning might have to stay until tomorrow. I think so, yeah. Just clean the bed the bed area and get it comfortable in there. And then do yeah. that. This oh. game again. Yeah. I'm First problem we found. Yeah. Um, well, I wasn't thorough enough in my antifreeze, I suppose. So I'd forgotten to run some through the shower and the upstands here, the pipes that come up from the floor. We've got a big old split in that one. Yes. So I'm going to try and just wrap it so we can pressurise the system and find out what other leaks we've got, but I'm going to have to replace that whole section of pipe. That's the pump on. Should I run through this tap? Yeah. Still not building any pressure though, is it? So when the pump is on, that's our yellow indicator light to say that the pump's running. But when you haven't been using the taps for a while, the um, sometimes there's an airlock. So we're trying to run out the air from the system. We just found what the problem was. So this hot tap was open, so that'll be going all the way down, 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 down into the engine build. Oh, well. What happens when you leave a boat for nine months and you just kind of forget yeah. how all these things happen so easily on so, the boat? So now if I turn it on, that should be all right? Yeah, so the pump was still running just because that hot tap was open. Okay, I'll go and try again. So, yeah, here we go. Yeah, yes. Okay, now see if this is leaking. Ah. What about this sort of game? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely getting a little bit smoky in here. And it is nice and warm. It is nice <coughs> and toasty. Nice and toasty. So I just think it's uh, diesel um, that's got rubbed into the club, that fiberglass heat protector and it's just evaporating out. Okay. The bonus is the internet's working here at the yard, so we've got internet TV. Um, Do this cooking. 
and we're going to have an early night because we're both really tired. Yeah, definitely. Good morning. Good morning. So what are we doing today? Well, um, I'm going to try and finish the blog. Well, not finish it, obviously, because I'm a bit behind. Try and write some blog stuff. You're, what are you doing today? Um, I am going to be locking myself away in the um, generator room and yeah. stripping the generator out completely and we're going to lower it down. Oh. Are we? We. Are we? Yeah. But it's a wet day today, it's raining outside and it's going to get worse today so there's no point in doing like gel coat repairs and all the other stuff I've got to do. It's just going to get either in the engine room or in the locker and do my business in there. So that's what I'm doing. Um, I just thought the other thing we're going to do today is cut your hair. Yeah. Oh. That's, that's pretty bad. No, I have to keep the hat on to keep it under control, otherwise it goes on a rampage. Yeah. <laughs> Time for Mr. Mullet Man to disappear. Have you snippled the grey out? Um, no, you'd be bold if I did that. <laughs> right there! Yeah? <laughs> Is this really the best way? Yeah. I actually want you to lift it. I'll try and I'll try and lift it up and you lift it too. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, and then lock it. Yeah, it's locked. Yeah. I don't think this is ever gonna come out of this box. This is no way. It's... The only other option is to is to cut the thing off. It's just it's stupid. It's absolutely stupid. It's completely unserviceable. It's put together in a factory once and then there's no way. And how did he get it in here? Because you can't get the box out through there. The motor and the, the generator part might just fit if you can get it out of the box. But the box didn't come through this hole. This thing has been the bane of my existence for so well, long. I just now. pack it up and chuck it over. Because I got it running this morning. I don't know what I'm probably <laughs> taking it out. No, it's got, I've got to get in there to clean it because it's got um, oil from when the head was leaking. It's all oil in there. And if you get an oil fire in a plastic box, it, that's, that's lethal. You can't put them out. That'll be the end of the boat. So I've got to get in there and detergent everything, clean it up. I need to check all the wiring as well that runs. All, you know, it's all hidden, so I can't. Mm. There seems to be problems with wires breaking all the time. I've got to get to them. So I think I'm just going to cut, like, cut down there. With what an angle grinder? A little bit. This will make a bit of a smell. This is like one of the No. Oh. Okay. Let's hope there isn't a fire. Ben? No. You've got to make sure there's some beers in that fridge. This is getting very ugly. I don't know. Congratulations, it's a generator. Mm. <laughs> it's definitely a pain in the ass. I, honestly, I don't know how, how they got it in there in the first place. I'm so lightheaded. That was like a two hour wrestle. It's not to say it can't be saved, but I'm just like, do I want to stick it back in there and then fuck around with it for another year, two years, whatever? Anyway, I want to get it off the boat, so I'm going to try and swing it out over where the ladder is and then just lower it down. Okay. Um, yeah, well, I think what it's going to try and do is you feel it's, it's naturally swinging against the side of the solar panel there. Mm. So you just want to hold the boom so it's not touching that. Yeah. And then gradually bring it out as I come up. Four inches maybe. Wait, 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 wait. That's it. Yeah. And then tell me when you want to go up. Yeah, up. Uh, stop. Yeah, right, stop there, it might go now. Okay. Yeah, that'll clear it. Don't try not to get underneath it. Oh. Just. Right. This is 
so dodgy. Just don't pull on your left hand. Again, if you can help me guide it, just stop it bumping into the winch. It's good. Yeah, it'll clear the winch. Oh, stop. Oh, yeah, I'll put that on. It's just whilst it's bouncing, it's not working. And I don't want you going over the edge, Ben. I mean, if it drops now, it drops, but... I can actually tell you what, go to the mast, yeah. and you let down the top of your on the winch. It's on the winch, so you just got to just ease it, ease it, like you normally use a winch. Yeah, just gently go down. Right, stop there. I'm going to get the other side of it there. Okay, gently down. Stop that, stop that. Let's find just see where you are against the floor now. It's nearly there. It's on the floor! Oh. Oh my god. Oh, oh Dave, you're that. That was the most ridiculous thing we've ever done. And uh, that's where the generator did live, in that dirty little hole, which is why Ben spent most of his time in there. Yeah. And there she is, Jenny the bitch. So I spit on it? <laughs> well done. You've had a tough day, haven't you? Yeah. I don't deserve it. I think you do. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna enjoy this and then you'll have a wash. Wow, it's freezing out there. Yeah, like your heating switched itself on. Automatically at like, I don't know, two in the morning? It kept us alive. Why is it so cold again then? I don't know, the wind's just coming from the north northwest and it's really windy, isn't it? It's really windy, really cold, it's bitter, absolutely bitter out there. I'm gonna keep the heat on in here today. Uh, yeah. Die, I don't really want to have to work outside. I don't think the gel coat will set. No. Not in this temperature. So the generator's been sat out in the cold all night. Naughty stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whilst I think what I'm going to do with it. Kettle's on. Good. Really strong coffee. Really strong coffee. Okay. We've got a new toy. New generator time. Woohoo! It's yo! Did it's you choose that colour for <laughs> me? It's your favourite <laughs> colour, yeah. Let's hope it's um, really reliable. That's quite compact, isn't it? It is. It's the only one that was. Um, short enough to fit in the deck box because that's really good ventilated space back there yeah that's fairly watertight when you put the cover on it so hopefully all we have to do is take the the cover off the box and then just chop the lid open a little bit yeah and the reason being the last one which lived in here yeah. was diesel obviously this one runs on petrol yeah so we can't have it in the locker it needs to go out, out on deck um cool yeah fingers crossed this all works it looks very clean and new and lovely i'm quite excited Quenching when it's grey hot will make it 25% softer than air cooling it. Grey hot just means really hot but not glowing red any longer. Okay, I'm going to quench if it. If there then. is a layer of fine silver bit up on the piece, it can be difficult to recognise that the piece is actually red hot because it will appear white. This is to do with jewellery work. Though. Yeah, I'm going to quench it. This is the part I've just soldered. Um, it looks like it's done a really good job. Um, I'd given it to the guys in the yard and asked them to braise it for me and I'd forgotten that you can't braise brass to stainless steel. But it's come out really well. I can't see any air gaps or pinholes. Um, looks like it's going to be really strong. 
and I'm really glad that I'm carrying silver solder on the boat because there's loads of other jobs I'm gonna um, find it useful for. I'm really pleased with that. So we're just waiting to get moved. Um, they have got to move Steve in front of us first. So I think we're gonna be left hanging for the night, aren't we, Ben? Swinging. Swinging. So this is where we now stay for the night. There is a block underneath. So now we can get um, these patches of anti-fouling done where the pads were when we were in the blocks. And we'll go back in tomorrow morning. So why are you reading your book? I'm trying to take my mind off going back in the water. I feel it's a bit nervous, I'm sick. A little bit sick. Yeah, because last time we went back in the water, which was in Portugal, all the sea cocks leaked. So, I mean, obviously, they've all been changed since then. Mm. And there's two new massive sea cocks in the engine room. Yeah. And it's just nerve wracking. So, yeah, I'm trying to mind off it. <sighs> Moment of truth. Oh, yeah. I think I might throw up. Oh, this is a happy face. <laughs> Show me your happy face, Ben. Yeah, I'm happy as well. <laughs> Thank God for that. Good morning. Good morning. Super high tide today, because it was a full moon last night. The boat is so high, my short little legs don't really get up there, so Ben's setting me up a little ladder. And then it's restoration dinghy, yeah? Project dinghy, yeah. Well, the old dinghy is in the water, hey. looking at worse for wear, <laughs> as usual. Remember this pose? Yep, did that a lot. Of my life doing this. Mm. What have we decided to do though? Oh, we can't afford a new one. So? So, um, we are going to try and fix this one up again. Um, our very good friend Rusty. Yeah. Has, um, Donated to the fund. Thanks, Rusty. So we're going to get some some of the sealer you put inside it, uh, and paint the outside of it. Is it like rubber paint sort it's of thing? Yeah. And we're hoping she's going to look good as new. <laughs> she's in a sorry state, isn't she? Oh, good times we've had in this dinghy, though, hey? Oh, exactly. <laughs> so we've been working on the dinghy for the last few days, sanding it all back to make like a key for this rubber paint we've bought and um, that's the grey paint just on there so I've been trying to sort of give one coat to where it leaks the worst and then um, we'll put a final coat over the whole thing. Um, we've also filled it with this sealant stuff which is like a very liquid kind of PVA gluey type thing isn't it Ben? And it's supposed to seal from the inside so you whack it all in and then you like tip the boat over and over and over and up on its end to coat it but where it's gone rubbed right through to the fabric here it's all just seeping out and it's sort of like it stopped the rubber paint setting now i'm going to try and put an adhesive patch on pump it up a little bit we'll paint it anyway i think it's probably a total loss though it'll, it's not going to be any worse than it was no, true. And we could, we could use, we were using it like that, we just having to pump it up a lot. Yeah, it's worth a go anyway. I mean, we, you know, buying a new one is well, ridiculous. So, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, as you can see, we're really 
really in the, in the market for a new one. I was going to say, it's a little long in the tooth at this stage. <laughs> yeah, let's yeah. we'll give it one <laughs> last, go, one yeah. last effort. Right. And then uh, hopefully you'll see us all the way back in the UK. And well, that's it. Well, so what's your plan now? You're heading out of here, you're spending some time um, on the coast. Gonna go down to we're going to go down to Baltimore. We're going to, everything's fine and we're staying good. We'll just go down to Delaware and then up to New York and then from there to Maine. Right. Well, we can we get just, to yeah, we're just waiting on the See what the weather does this season, whether we're going to get a, an early season good or whether it's a solid fog. And you're planning to sail back across we'd this go summer? From Maine, we'd, yeah, we'd go from Maine or yeah, Newport, yeah. Rhode Island, uh, but it's in North Carolina. Right, yeah. And then from there back to the UK. Yeah, people talk about islands like this. The Azores are the only island I can yeah. see. It, right? I'd like to see the Azores. I don't care about Bermuda or I don't yeah, see the yeah, Azores. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, perfect. Well, good. I yeah. hope everything works yeah. out. And I'll keep watching to see how you're making your progress. Yeah. Yeah. Should be a pretty cool thing, and then we'll also see how long that. Yeah, how long, how long exactly. That lasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers, Jeff. Thank you very much. Alrighty, guys. Take care. Safe travel. So I don't know if anyone remembers how wide this ladder was, but Brian has cut this um, that much out of the width of it, so now we can have a nice narrow ladder and have space for the hydrolane on the back. He has done an awesome job. Um, he's put solid bar in here and then made his wells. So now we've got a nice, super neat ladder. I'm over the moon about it. I think it looks awesome. Yeah, but thanks, he's Brian. In, he's got back to us. I'm just casting some little white rubber pads, and then I'll be mounting later today. But, um, then we'll be on to the hydrogen after that. Woohoo! We're getting on. All right. Six ready. Done. Yeah. I'm just tightening up this end. Cut off all the excess. But. Yeah. Looks really smart. Yeah, you just don't look too close to the top bit. It's alright. Just got the other side to do now, it's taken me a day and a half. <laughs> My job today is a nice little job. I've got to make some more of these teak backing blocks um, for mounting the brackets, the hydrovane brackets. This, this is the one that came with the second hand unit I got in the UK. Um, but I've got to make three different ones to make the other attachment points. I'm just assembling this is the bracket that we've cut. Put the lock nuts on, and this is the extender. So it's not, I'm not going to weld it. I mean, everyone says, "Oh, why don't you weld it?" But I designed it to be bolted together, so it is like just friction that holds it together because the, both the aluminium plates will warp a little bit as you crank down on them, and then lock them together. It's not pretty, but it's it's pretty strong, so it will get. I'm absolutely sure it will get us across the Atlantic. That's for the wind vane. Yeah. So this is the one that goes at the top and holds the top part of the wind vane, so it's not actually the, the one that takes most of the, the force, but it can sit on its teak blocks like that, and the nuts are hidden away. I've just got to nick the ends off those nuts. So all those parts you, you um, did individually, didn't you? You melted aluminium down and yeah. cast them? We, um, I cast that one and I cast that one with the cross-shaped red at the back of them, and then that was some aluminium plate that I bought and I cut down, and then the other Part, which is the hydrovane part that came with the second hand unit bolts on there and that holds the shaft of the, of the hydrovane and then I'm going to have to drill like probably either four or six holes in this to fix to the back of the boat and it'll be through bolted through to reinforcing plates. Yeah. So yeah it's a big job it's a lot of work to make it strong enough but you're effectively adding a second rudder to the boat which is a good thing if we had a problem with hydraulics or... Yeah it's a good know, backup. Yeah it's a great backup so Cool. Um, and hopefully it'll take the load off the autopilots and therefore the batteries and the, the solar system because now we're down to like the little generator instead of a you know a big diesel that runs off endless almost endless fuel. Mm -hmm. We've got this little thing which is the next thing that we'll get running, but I think it'll I think it will work fine. Awesome. No, the ladder's going to go like there. Oh, okay. And then this is here, and this has to be well, it's to do with getting away back from the backstays and, and the boom. So, I think this is probably the best position. You hate drilling holes in the boat, don't you? I hate it. 
Yeah, I found these are much better at going into the gel coat rather than that twisted flute drill bit. They don't chip the glass right. um, or gel coat. Yeah, but it's a nice day. Yeah. What are we going to do today? I don't know, what are we going to do today? <laughs> we're going to work through the same list of jobs that we've been working through for the last uh, three weeks. It's all a bad dream. Mm. Morning. It is the 24th of um, April, and today is the day we're going to be leaving Tidewater Marina. We've been here for like three weeks or so, just over. It's nearly a month. A lot of upgrades, um, a lot of general maintenance, and other bits that, that really needed doing. Um, we're not 100%, we've, um, but everything else we, we can do pretty much on the way or at anchor, so not too worried. I think we're all ready to go. And I wanted to take this opportunity just before we leave today to sort of uh, say thank you to everybody we've met here. Like Habit of Grace is a quiet town. There's not a lot going on here, but it's a nice town. The people are kind. Um, it's a pleasant place to be. Uh, Tidewater Marina is a, is a great little marina. Um, it's a good yard. Uh, the people who work here are, are fantastic. They, they've gone out of their way to make our stay here really easy and enjoyable. Um, I've got to say thanks to Jeff Andrews, he's been really helpful, you know, organising a courtesy car for us and doing loads of other stuff, it's just made our stay a lot more pleasant. Guys in the yard as well, like Jim and Tim and uh, and Garrett. And then I've uh, just got to also say a little bit about the uh, the other people we've met in the yard, um, like Steve, who he works here as well. Um, so thank you Steve, I hope you get your boat in the water soon and we see you out, out on the big blue sometime. Also, Jake, it was a bit of a stroke of luck that we ended up in the yard next to Jake and Jamie. He's a fountain of knowledge, he knows a lot, a lot about fixing up boats. And yeah, it's been great to get to know them. So when we leave here today, we're gonna to head down to towards Baltimore. We'll probably anchor out for one night just to, just to chill out and get the feel of being on the hook again. And then we are gonna go um, on to Baltimore. We're gonna be taking um, Jake and Jamie's berth We've kind of lucked out there. It's going to be awesome to go and see what Baltimore's all about, and um, and have a place to stay whilst we're down there, which is which is great. You ready, Nick? Yep. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Well done, baby. We're, we're off. off. Yeah, yeah. Finally free. 
Feels Avengers, good already. Avengers begin again. Yeah. I forgot to say. Never let go